The patient is a 61-year-old male patient, a retired school teacher. He complains of a swelling at the right lower abdomen for five years. But five years ago, he noticed a swelling at the right lower abdomen and he was then he was changing his clothes. The swelling was about 2 by 2 centimeters, which he readily pushed back into the abdomen. Later, he noticed the swelling recurring whenever he walks, lifts heavy objects and disappears online. Initially, he, the notice swelling only occurred occasionally, but slowly it occurred more frequently whenever he stands or coughs. It also gradually increased in size, but was painless. Later, he needed to be pushed back manually to reduce it, but remained painless. There was no abdominal pain, distension, vomiting or constipation. He is now retired and staying in a single-storey house, terrace house in Tambun Kaladi, Kuling, which is around 4 kilometers away from the hospital. Now, these are the questions on history. What are the significant points in the history? Okay, the points are age 61 years old, male patient, swelling at the right lower abdomen for five years. The swelling was small and was pushed back easily. The swelling uh, kept recurring more and more frequently with time and it gradually increased in size. However, it was painless and the patient lives in a single story terrace house. Question number two, what is the significance of any, if any, of the patient staying in a single story terrace house? This will make the post-op ambulation very easy and convenient for the patient. Question number three, what is the most likely diagnosis from the patient's history? Inguinal hernia. Okay, on examination, the abdomen was not distended, it was moving well with respiration, there were no skin discoloration, visible scars, pulsation, peristalsis and dilated veins. The umbilicus is centrally located and inverted. There is a swelling in the right inguinal region, approximately 5 by 5 cm in size. The swelling becomes more prominent upon coughing. There is no skin changes, ulceration, bleeding, visible pulsation or dilated veins or discharge upon from the mass. The mass is globular in shape and localized to the right inguinal region. It is soft and mildly tender and reducible. Coughing pulse is positive and the bowel sounds are normal. The rest of the abdomen is normal. Now, these are the questions you should attempt on examining the patient. Question number one, list the significant signs in the patient. The significant signs, swelling in the right inguinal region, prominent upon coughing and standing, globular in shape and localized to the right inguinal region. It is soft in consistency, mildly tender and reducible. The second question, what is a reducible swelling and what is its significance? A reducible swelling is one that can return into the abdomen spontaneously or push back. Question number three, what special examination or test you will perform on the patient to confirm the diagnosis? These include a finger occlusion test, three finger test or Siemens test, digital scrotal imagination test, and also check the swelling to see whether you can get above the swelling. Okay, this is a picture of a patient with a right inguinal swelling. What is the spot diagnosis? And what is the reason? The spot diagnosis, the right inguinal hernia. 
The reasons are uh, it's elongated swelling, right inguinal region pointing to the, the scrotum, and the skin away is normal. Okay, why were questions for this case? Question 1a What are the differential diagnoses of an inguinal mass? These include inguinal hernia, lymphadenopathy, inguinal cyst, aneurysm of the femoral artery, and saphena varix. Question 1b Name the investigations to differentiate one from the other. These include a clinical test known as the occlusion test or evagination test, a three finger uh, Siemens test, test for cough impulse, and ultrasound scan. What are the complications of an inguinal hernia? Incarceration, irreducibility, obstruction, strangulation, gangrene of the bowel, perforation of the gangrenous bowel leading to septicemia. Question number three. What is the surgical treatment of a reducible hernia? Surgical repair, which consists of a herniography or using a mesh known as hernioplasty. It can be either done open or the laparoscopic method. Name the complications of hernioplasty. Hematoma and bleeding, wound infection, nerve injury, especially the ilioinguinal nerve which traverses the inguinal canal, bowel injury and recurrence of hernia. What are the post-operative instructions or advice you would want to give the patient on discharge? Adequate or healthy diet, adequate rest, early ambulation, avoid weightlifting, and if he's a smoker, stop smoking. Okay, these are three cases of inguinal hernia. In this case, you have got bilateral direct inguinal hernia. This is a indir indirect uh, reducible hernia. And this is a tense swelling suggesting it may be obstructed or even strangulated inguinal hernia in a female patient. So you can see the difference between these two. Here the skin is stretched and shiny. Here, the skin is lax and appears, looks soft. It's suggestive of uncomplication, no complications. This is complicated. Okay, these pictures show you uh, a normal inguinal canal here, the epigastric vessels behind the peritoneum and the inguinal canal empty. Here, in indirect inguinal hernia, okay, you can see the inguinal hernia uh, imagine, exvaginates into the scrotum through the uh, internal ring which is located here, lateral to the epigastric vessels, huh? which is lateral to the epigastric vessels. And this is a direct inguinal hernia where the hernia comes out medial to the epigastric region vessels. Okay, this is the difference. Okay, here again a picture to show you the inguinal canal from the deep ring to the superficial ring. Direct hernia comes into the ring medial to the deep ring through the posterior abdominal wall. And the rest of its journey to the scrotum is similar to an indirect inguinal hernia. Here an indirect hernia comes up into the into the comes into the inguinal canal through the deep vein, and then it travels onwards to come to the scrotum to the external uh, or the superficial ring. Okay, this is the three finger semen test. You can see three, three fingers are placed to occlude the deep ring, superficial ring, and the femoral ring. Okay, here, if the cough impulse is here, it is indirect. Well, here. 
if it is coffee bus is felt in the superficial ring then it's a direct inguinal hernia and if it is felt in the femoral ring then it is a femoral inguinal hernia a femoral hernia this is the ring occlusion test okay where you apply pressure with your fingers on the the deep ring and ask the patient to cough if the hernia comes out then it is a direct hernia if the hernia is prevented to come out because of your pressure then it's a deep inguinal, deep uh, indirect inguinal hernia this is the finger evaluation uh, evagination test where the little finger is introduced into the scrot into the scrotum into the inguinal canal and checking the pulse if the pulse is felt on the tip of the finger it's an indirect inguinal hernia whereas if the cough impulse is felt in the sides of the finger it is a direct inguinal hernia okay this diagram shows you the important landmarks that you must look for in a patient with inguinal hernia here this is the mid inguinal uh, this is the line from the symphysis pubics to the ASIS okay and this is the superficial or imaginary inguinal line and this is the midpoint of that inguinal line this is the ligament which attaches the pubic tubercle to the ASIS and this is the inguinal ligament and this inguinal ligament the midpoint is known as the midpoint of the inguinal ligament the other landmarks are the important pubic tubercle and symphysis pubis but this is the deep inguinal ring which is located above the midpoint of the inguinal ligament this is the superficial ring which lies above and medial to the pubic tubercle and this is the femoral ring which lies lateral and it below and lateral the pubic, uh, pubic tubercle okay this is uh, okay, another diagram to show uh, okay the pubic tubercle okay the pubic tubercle the superficial ring is above and medial the femoral ring is below and lateral this is an important observation that must be taken into account. There's controversy over the location of the deep inguinal ring. Right? Deep inguinal ring here. Either is it over the mid inguinal point as shown here, or is it above the midpoint of the inguinal ligament, which is mentioned in the uh, belly and love. Okay, here. This is a controversy, but this controversy is merely academic. As it today, clinically, it may not be significant. Okay, this is another diagram to show you the various landmarks which I've mentioned so far. Okay, the inguinal canal is important to know the boundaries of the inguinal canal, the roof, posterior wall, floor, and anterior wall. Okay, these are the landmarks that you must be familiar with. The contents of the inguinal canal, four, four structures, spermatic cord, round ligament, female, iliac inguinal nerve, the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve. Okay, thank you for joining me for this short session.